I've recently seen this very cool LinkedIn post that describes how bar charts are easy for comparisons, but if you want to look at each data point independently, then dots might be the better alternative. I think the idea is kind of cool, so today I want to show you how to create both of these plots using ggplot, and then you can decide for yourself if you want to use dots or bars depending on what you want to do. In my quarter document, I've already put in a code chunk that loads the tidyverse and generates some fake data with some fictitious reasons for returning an item or whatever. I just made something up. It's just for the demo of this video here. Now let's start out with the bar chart. First, we create a new code chunk, and then all we have to do is to take our data set, pass it to ggplot, where we specify the aesthetics, of course, and on the y-axis, we use the reason for return. Here, I want to make sure that the labels for my bar chart are on the y-axis, because then we don't have to worry that things overlap when everything is on the x-axis. In general, you want to have labels on the y-axis because that they are just easily legible. On the x-axis, I want to use the returned items, and then to create the bar chart, you just have to use GM call. And then, of course, you have to use the correct data set. I have to use fake that and not sorted that. I'm getting ahead of myself. I copied and pasted some code from my blog post, and I accidentally copied the wrong one. Doesn't matter. I've corrected it now, and you can see the bar chart here. And the first thing that you notice is that the bar charts are not really in ascending or descending order, and this is a terrible thing to do for a bar chart. And this is where the sorted data set that I've just used by mistake comes into play. So let's create it. Let's create a variable called sorted dead, which is based on the fake data set where we change the column reason for return by applying FCT reorder on the same column and ordering everything by the number of returned items. And now if I execute this, my data set looks exactly the same. But now this part here is a factor. And the factor means that this is an ordered variable and the order will now determine the order of the bars. And we have set the order of these factor variables here. We can actually check this. We use sorted that and put in reason for return. Then we see here that the levels are exactly in the order of these numbers here. So that's what FCT reorder does. And now if you use this data set here and put this to ggplot, then you will get a nicely ordered bar chart. And now the bar shot is basically finished, but I feel bad leaving it like that. So let's just style it a little bit. Let's just set the fill aesthetic to some nice color. Let's apply a fee minimal. In there, we can also set the base size and the base family to something nicer. We can modify the labels. So this means as a title, we use something that describes what the data is about. And on the X and Y axis, we don't actually need labels because everything is explained by the title. Next, I also want to change something that really grinds my gears with bar plots and ggplot because the labels here right now are really far away from the bars. That's because the axes get expanded and this is often something good to do, but not in this case. So this is why we have to modify the scale x continuous layer and in there we set the expansion to something else and then we get a nicer bar chart. Finally, we can get rid of the horizontal grid lines. There are really not much use here. So let's throw them out and then we can also move the title a little bit. In general, I prefer this position for the title more than when it is aligned with the panel here. All right, cool. So this is how you create the bar chart and it's again great for making comparisons, but maybe you want to focus on the specific groups inside of your chart. Hi there, I hope this video is useful to you so far and I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please do me a favor and hit the like button because then I feel really great about myself and this will help me to be more productive and bust out more videos. So thank you for that and now let's get back to the video. So let's make a dot plot out of this and really the only thing that we have to change is this GM call layer here where we replace it by some suitable GM point layer. Here, this means that we can first throw in a GM point layer and set things like the color and size of the points. And of course, we don't need the columns anymore then. And that's why we remove them. And then if we execute this, we get a dot plot. But now we see that our point gets cut off here. The one that is farthest to the left gets cut off. So this is why we modify the axis expansion here on the left hand side and set this to something like 0.25. And this ensures that we have enough space to put a label next to the point. Now to get the labels inside of the dot plot, we have to add a GM text layer to this. In there, we don't have to specify the coordinates because these are already set in the base layer of our ggplot. So this is why we only have to specify the label aesthetic and then we can plot this, but this doesn't look good. So let's make this right aligned. Let's nudge it a little bit further. Then we can modify the size. 
we can make sure that it's a nice font family and we can make it bold so that it is easier legible. Maybe we could actually move this a little bit further. Let's make this 0.55. This looks a little bit better. Let's use that value. There is nothing specific about this value. I just use what I felt like using here. And now we're kind of in an odd situation. We have labels directly at the points and we have y-axis labels, which is a bit dumb. We only need one of those. And since we have taken a lot of care to get the labels to the points, let's remove the axis labels here. So that is why we modify the theme layer. And in there, we set the axis text .y argument to element blank. And this will get rid of the y-axis labels. Actually, I might even like my original nudge value a little bit better again. Maybe this is the final value I chose. Let's look at this. Yeah, I think this value is also fine. It moved it a little bit. You see, these things always change when the panel size changed. And here this happened when we removed the y-axis labels. Again, here I just chose whatever felt best. No particular reason for using 0.5. Next, I want to remove a couple of grid lines because I don't think we need that many. So let's remove the minor grid lines from the x-axis. So let's copy this part here, paste it in here, change this to the x-axis and make this into minor. That way we have more room for the labels themselves and there's no grid line that goes through them which can make it hard to read them. But of course this can't really be helped with the ones that go through the major grid lines you see for wrong item and damaged and unhappy with the product, they inevitably go through the grid lines here. That's not something we can change, but what we could change is make sure that the labels themselves have a white background color. And this is where one of my favorite packages comes in, namely ggtext. This package is great because it can really customize your text and you can do a lot of it with just this package. In fact, this package is so great, I have included it in the list of my favorite packages. And if you're curious what else is in that list, you can check out this video. There should even be a notification popping up right about now. And if not, if I mess that up, if I forget it, there's a link in the description that will lead you to that video. Anyway, we want to use ggtext here. So all we have to do is to, instead of gm text, use from ggtext, use gm rich text. And if we execute this, we can see that we have labels now. We get something with a white background behind it, but we can also see that we have a border around these labels, which is kind of annoying. I don't know why that is the default but that's just what it is. I, I kind of always remove it, but I don't know. Again, I'm not sure why this is the default. What you can do to get rid of it is set color.outline to NA. Shoot, this one wasn't the right one. What I wanted to have is label.color. Even though I use this all the time, I have to look it up all the time. And now with that, we have labels that have white background behind it, but they have no border around the labels. That way the labels become a little bit more legible and we are not at the risk of having labels be not legible because there's a grid line going through them. So this is our dot plot. It helps us to focus on individual categories. Let me know in the comments if you think this one is better than the bar charts or how you feel about it in general. There's probably no right answer to this. You can use both of these charts depending on what you want to do. And if you want to learn more about ggplot, you could check out one of these two videos next, or you could look at my data visualization course where I show you way more advanced stuff. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.